Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat Studio. I teach people how to paint step by step, both online and in person, and I also create art kits. Anyways, today we are going to paint a snowman. And I've got this five foot board here. Oof, I've done a little bit of pre-sketching on it. And so buckle up, grab a snack, maybe some hot cocoa. This is going to be a slightly longer session than normal. So I'm going to start with some titanium white and I'm going to grab a little bit of black. Oop. Okay. There we are. God, this thing is kind of going up. All right. Hey, Deborah. Hi, Shirley. Hey, Holly. Okay. So black and white going to mix a gray. So just a tiny, tiny corner of black on my brush, put it over here, big old hunk of white, start mixing, and we've got a gray. So I think I will start down here at the base, make sure you can see this on camera. And all right, I am good, this is gonna be a, a paint intensive kind of piece here. So grabbing more black and white and mixing it together. And so the idea is I'm gonna do a snowman, and he's gonna be holding a little bird. Ugh, all right, come on paint, let's do our thing. There we go. And I'm almost freehanding this. I uh, created, actually used a Lowe's bucket to trace my first circle, and then the microwave plate to do the second circle, and then Chinese takeout lid to do the third circle. So you could easily just kind of trace three circles on your canvas or board. And this again is about nine inches wide, almost 10. And so I've kind of sketched it in real quick so you can see how big it's gonna be. I've yet to figure out how to get this camera, how well to get all this to show on camera. All right. And I am feeling like this is gonna be a major paint hog. So we're gonna just squeeze a whole bunch more out. And get some closer to pure white in the middle. Getting little bits of black to help create the shading. And I'm really allowing a lot of the mixing to occur right there on my surface. Well, I almost said canvas, but this is obviously not a canvas. It's a, it's a one inch thick board. Just trying to get that base coverage going on right now. And once I've got a base coverage, then I can kind of, where it's a little bit of sort of a wet surface of paint, I can do a little bit more blending. And I primed it with just black flat outdoor house paint. Um, and so, because this board is eventually gonna be outdoors, All right, super exciting, right? I'm gonna add just a little bit, of, grab a little black on my thing here, mix it up a little bit more. I know it's a lot of black and white. So it's funny because gray, gray is the new white. Okay, there we go. And I'm just kind of getting some of that gray mix around the edges. I'm hoping you can see that on camera, okay. A little bit. Um, oh, this way. Here we go. So I'm down here at the bottom. So his his bottom is here, and his head is going to go that way. So get a little bit more gray in there. And by adding the gray, it really helps create some dimension. All right. Then we'll move on. So you can kind of see it. There we go. A little bit more white in the middle. So we're just getting the base coverage on. And I'm noticing I'm getting a couple of bald spots with my brush, so it probably means I need to start giving it a little bit of a break. And we'll come around the edges again with that darker gray color, which I know seems a little bit crazy, but trust me on this. It's gonna seem white, even though it's, even though it's gray. Now that I've got that gray outer edge, I'm gonna grab just kind of pure white titanium white and blend it. 
And we'll come back in and do even more definition. So if these two parts of the snowman appear to be kind of smushing together, that's okay. We'll tune it more later. Right now we're just really trying to get, really just trying to get the base coating on. Okay. Pretty smooth right there. Yo. All right, next one. And we'll do some gray around Mr. Snowman's chin right here. A little bit. There it is. He's going to have a green hat, I think. And then we'll paint his little nose orange. And we'll put a scarf on him. And should be cute. Kind of a good all winter long kind of porch sign. And I got this wood at Lowe's. And these are typical um, of the porch signs that I have in the past been selling to some extent. This one is of course a commission. Uh, my real goal though, is to get all of you to join me in, in painting these. Cause they're way more fun when we all do it together. Okay, that's not bad. And again, I still have a few funky spots. Let me pull it back. And yes, it does seem pretty gray. Timber. Oops. Okay. I'm going to move back down to the base where Mr. Snowman was sitting. And I'm just going to kind of gray in the base. Gray and white. I'll probably come in with some. Actually, you know what? Let's add some blue now. I'm going to grab a little turquoise. Ooh, this is gooky. I have got a lot of paint boogers going on today. It's okay, though. All right. I'm gonna have to keep one fist on this sucker, otherwise it just wants to tip off the tip off the table. Woo! So, I grabbed some, here we are, turquoise. And I'm gonna sort of pull some in the middle here, and I'm gonna grab a big chunk of white and mix and just kinda Throw that on there, mostly white. And then we'll mix bits of turquoise. And again, this is this is gonna be a layered approach. We're just trying to get kind of a base on because that is black. But it was still easier. In fact, I'm just gonna take that bottle and come on, boom, squeeze it right on. Get that coverage in there, and then we'll do some more blending. All right, I'm gonna scoot it a little bit this way, slightly off camera, just so I, just so I don't have a big crash down accident with this board. Okay. Since I got some of that white, put a little shine here. Add a little bit more of the turquoise and. Just kind of blend the turquoise in a little. And what that does is it just allows us to differentiate between the ground that the, the snowman is sitting on and the snowman himself. So it's a really fun way to kind of play with the whites. And this guy, because he really wants to show the brush strokes and where the brush stops, I'm finding I have to kind of paint all the way across the board and not lift the brush while it is in contact with the board. Okay, there we go. So we now have kind of a turquoisey, and I know it looks a little weird on camera, but it will come together. So taking the paper towel, I'm going to just really wipe as much of that paint off as I can. Um, before I go and rinse, because there's a lot of paint embedded on that brush. Set the first palette aside, grab a second one. And let's see, we're gonna make a green hat. So let's see, we've got a couple of greens. I have, these are all DecoArt Americana. So I've grabbed mistletoe, citron, and evergreen. Oh, right here. 
but basically think of it as a dark green, a bright medium green, and then an almost fluorescent yellowy green. So we'll start with the bright basic green, also known as mistletoe. Oh, I should have shaken that sucker up. That's okay, we'll, we'll get, ugh, ew. All right, so as sometimes happens when you buy paint, if it's not properly mixed, the medium and the pigment have separated, which is what just happened here. Dope. Just gonna wipe that stuff off, call it a wash, give my paint a solid shake, and do it again. Oh yeah, that's better. This time it came out solid, so yeah. It happens, and it's all good. So I still haven't actually bothered to rinse my brush. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just kind of get his hat in there. And I just kind of pencil sketched this on. You know, snowmen are not, not, not super complicated to draw. Do your three circles and then maybe a little rim for what would be a hat. Right here. I think it needs to come maybe to right here and we'll add a scarf after the white is dry. Probably a red scarf because Miss Sandy who ordered this wanted a little bit of Christmas colors on it but she also wants it to be good for all winter long. So at some point I'll also get some writing on this. This is welcome, but I'll probably have to wait for all the rest of the paint to get dry before I go that route. All right, so just getting that nice basic green, green coating. A little bit more on the hat. Woo! There we go. So I'm trying to keep the paint a little bit wet. So that when I come in and do some blending here, that the colors will, will work together. It's probably time to move on to a smaller brush. Go along the side a little bit here just for fun. I advocate it with my canvas. It's not quite as much with the porch signs just because they're porch signs. There's only so much a girl can do. Okay. So we've done that. We'll take the polka dot you want me to do a polka dot necktie holly his hat's gonna be solid so i'm gonna shake this guy in advance it's the dark darker green the evergreen i could also just use black in the green but i'm feeling like that's a good color there and i'm gonna move to a smaller wow here we go a slightly smaller brush so this is the big guy i was working with before i've now more or less have the bristle sizes these are still pretty large format brushes compared to you know what we say use with our art kits and stuff. So we'll get a little bit of dark around Mr. Snowman's head. Yeah, blend that guy in. And we're trying to kind of create the shadow. So one of the things we do to just make these things a little bit more believable, a little less cartoonish, although it's a snowman, so it's gonna be a little cartoonish, right? Um, as we try to add shading, it just makes it a little bit more polished looking. All right, I'm plowing through this paint really quickly. And after we're done getting all the tones in, we will also come back and add some, when it's dry, add some outlines and whatnot, which really, really help. Okay, so you see we've basically done the rim there. And then we're coming into the for the stove pipe portion of his hat. And I think, let's see, we will have the shadows today. Our rule is the shadows will be on Mr. Snowman's right side. So grabbing more of that evergreen paint and I'm just kind of dragging it and blending it through that lighter green. I happen to use mistletoe, but if you have festive green or something else, that is good enough. That's why I try to refer to these mostly as dark green, 
bright green and screaming fluorescent -y something green. Um, having the exact colors really doesn't matter. As long as you're kind of in the ballpark, it's good enough. Especially these days, because there's so many paint colors that have become really difficult to find. Um, amongst them, the Hauser Dark Green, which is one of my favorite for the dark colors. Um, and so I'd much rather say, hey, grab what you can. So I found another green that's almost exactly like Hauser, which is one of my favorites. And it's called Black Forest Green. And it's almost indistinguishable. Good enough, as they say, or good enough for government work. All right, and I'm just adding a little bit more shading down here around Mr. Snowman's head under his hat. There we go. I think, ah, oh, shoot, I splooshed. Well, we'll save that. And we'll cover it with some coal bits for his, his mouth. Okay. All right. Oh, I really splooshed. Goodness me. Well, let's, let's, let's make it work, right? Just drag the paint. Okay. There. I'll deal with this face later, but maybe just pop that up. Good. Sorry, I'm getting all quiet. No, Wendy, no. Baby wipes are also awesome, although I feel like this paint is still wet enough that baby wipe might just take the whole thing up. So hopefully you can see that we're starting to get kind of the shading for the hat. And it'll become even more interesting and fun once we add some, some black outlines to it to really like bump up the definition. However, because this is very wet right now, I'm, I'm not really wanting to do it yet. Gosh, the snowman painting goes fast, doesn't it? Holy moly's. So on that note, I'm gonna wipe the Wipe the majority of the paint off these brushes and give them a good rinse. And um, if you've if you've hung with me before with paintings, you've heard it a million times. But I do try to re remind you over and over and over again, because even I screw up sometimes. Do not leave your brushes soaking in water. That is the number one way to ruin them. So you really want to just get them get them rinsed and dried. There's still going to be junk in them still coming out pretty green but that's but that's going to be a far uh, significantly better than than letting them soak and the reason we don't let them soak is that you know all these bristles are glued in um, and you'll loosen the glue so when i'm done done like finish painting for the day i'm actually going to wash these with soap and water but obviously nobody has time for that you know in between each color okie dokie so let's go ahead and do a little bird. Actually, I'm gonna start with a darker tone. So I have a red. This happens to be a DecoArt Americana Cherry Red. It doesn't have to be that color. Any old red will do. Um, I really like the DecoArt Americana colors. They tend to have some of the best coverage out there. Well, that's a brand new brush. All right, we'll go with a funky brush. So I've kind of hand jammed a little bird here just with some, a pencil. But let's let's show you how to do it. We saw a circle here. Funk. Oh yeah. This is not all right, so it's gonna be hard to get this guy to show up. He's gonna take a lot of coats of paint. Maybe we'll add a little bit of white and see what happens. Obviously it's gonna seem pink, but sometimes just a bit of titanium white will really increase the coverage. So if we get so he'll start a little pink. And that's okay. I'll go over him but that white base is going to help the red pop a little bit more later so it's kind of an oval for his body oh you can't see that can you? I'm sorry oval for his body I'm gonna do another circle right here for his head well it's an oval circle not accurate but good enough because it's a bird and then sort of an extended triangle bit here for his tail Captain of the Pants would say, tra la la. There we go. So that's way too pink for my taste, but again, we're just gonna let that dry and so I can come over it and make it pop as the bright red that we want. Okay, so we have the start of a bird and we'll do the beak later with an orange. Once I start 
breaking out the orange to do the nose. Okay. So why don't we, oh, I forgot to have the brown out. Let me grab the brown. Give me one second. when I got it nailed, we shake it. So again, I'll dry this guy off. I'm not gonna worry about getting all the paint out. A little touch of red in, in my brown is gonna be fine. Squeeze a little bit of brown on my palette. And this is a Deco Art Americana Dark Chocolate. And let's see, I sketched him, okay. So we will just kind of have a, a stick kind of come right here. Just a brown stick. And maybe a little bit here. A little something here. Give it a little bit more darkness. And making it a little bit rough and lumpy is good because it's a stick. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a touch of black, just dip into my black. Maybe mix, mix a little bit of black from my other palette with a brown to create a deeper tone. Brownish black, could be just plain black too if we wanted. There's this guy, as you can see. And I wanna just kinda come underneath this guy just drag a little bit of the dark color in there. And so I just downgraded or upgraded, changed out to a small, ah, there we are, square brush. So this is a guy I was using. This is the one I was using and this is the one I'm using now. Here we go. Okay, just so you have a sense. And this is kind of one of my more standard size brushes that I paint with. Although when you're doing large scale like this, you tend to need to use, break out the bigger brushes far more frequently. So seriously, you could go to Lowe's in the appearance wood section, grab yourself a board, a little bit of house paint. And again, I just use a black house paint on this sucker and then paint a snowman and then you too would have a cool porch sign. Now granted, you're gonna wanna spray it afterwards. Let me get some more black here, my color's getting low. Fady, there we go. And so I'm just adding that little bit of black as an accent or a, a shadow on the underside and it helps give a little bit more depth to, to his arm, whatever that is. Okay, right there. I'm gonna rinse this guy because we're going back in with some red. getting close. So another thing you could do if you wanted to speed this up is have a hairdryer handy and um, blow on it with a hairdryer on a nice warm setting. Okay, here we go. So we'll do a an oval right here. Look, you can see my paint's a little bit wet. And so Miss Sandy said she also wanted red. So we had to get our reds and our greens. I kind of figured, you know, I could paint this at midnight, but wouldn't it be more fun if you guys got to, to join me and learn how to do it and maybe even make your own? That would be fun. All right, so I did the circle for the head. Then we'll add a little triangle for the tail. Now I'm not focusing on super realistic here. We're kind of going for, for cute. And yes, I know, I'm not really a cute person, but sometimes cute is just, just what the doctor ordered. And this is such the perfect way to spend a Sunday night. I don't know about the rest of you, but one of my besties came over today. Actually, not today. She came over on Friday. And I said, hey, my Christmas wish is to watch sappy romance Christi Christmas movies and sip hot cocoa. So, my wish totally came true. Okay, I'm doing second coat on the bird on top of Mr. Snowman's head. 
just straight red. I don't need the white this time because the white from before has really given us a good background now. And so I watched not one, not two, not three, but four Seppy Romance Christmas movies and had hot cocoa. So my life is complete. I finally am like really, really feeling the whole Christmas season done with all. So I don't know. Some of you know me real well and know that I'm in the process of getting my, my MBA through work. And some of you probably didn't know, but have heard me moan about my acquisitions exam and acquisitions class. So I'm finally done with all my exams and we're getting like two weeks off. And I don't know about the rest of you, but there's something about just being obligated. Boom, party foul. All right, I need to wipe off my floor really quick. <laughs> all right. So there's something about being obligation free for a couple days or weeks where you do not have like homework and exams and studying and all that stuff hanging over your head. Okay, so I totally made a big old mess with, with the bird. So I'm baking out the handy dandy baby wipes and just, whoosh, yeah, there we go. Get all that red off. Okay, whoosa. We averted disaster. I think that was one of my biggest on camera screw ups ever. So, woohoo. You too can paint successfully, even if you're a klutz like me. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and luckily, I do have hardwood floors, so if I spill paint, I can just wipe it right up. Okay. Here we go. We have two cute red birds. Yay. Well, partial birds. And his little arm. I feel like I'd had this idea for his other arm. I need to put another arm somewhere. Okay, so should if I have him like this holding a bird, should I have his other arm over his head doing something? Or should I have his both arms kind of like this on the bird? What do you guys think? One arm up or both arms down? Opinions needed. Or we can come back to it. We don't have to have an opinion yet. I don't know. But he does need a second arm, doesn't he? Okay. Well, while you guys are deciding and telling me how I should paint this sucker. Oh, Holly, you think I should have his arm over his head? Okay. We will do that. I'm going to let the hat dry a little bit first so that I don't royally screw it up. But, you know, these things happen. And part of his hat is dry, so I'm going to make his nose. Ooh, got a hair in it. And so this guy with his nose, I'm going to use an, an, sort of a, a mushy orange. It's called Canyon Orange. Again, Deco Art Americana. One of the brands I like because usually it's pretty good coverage. Let me make sure I got good perspective on this guy. So I'll start his nose right about here. And I'm just going to kind of drag a, a triangle right on up. Pretty simple, right? And just fill it in. Yeah, okay, so I am gonna have to do several, oop, yuck, dragon red, green. I'm gonna have to do a couple coats. I'm gonna have to wait on it and that's fine. At least get the base filled in there. That's kind of nice in some parts. Some of the red that was still stuck in the brush was starting to show up. I like that. But now Mr. Snowman has a nose. We're getting there. It's kind of looking like a snowman. And do you see now that it's getting closer to dry, those parts that I did gray, it really just makes him look kind of dimensional and rounded versus oddly gray. Okay. I'm going to wipe off the brush again while I let some of the I let some of that orange dry and we'll grab some more black. Oh, actually, I've got a little bit here. And I think since we're moving into some smaller details, I'm going to grab a smaller brush. So I went from my small square brush to, I guess, if I'm wiping it off, I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to rinse it just to keep any excessive amounts of paint from drying on it. So now I've got a smaller round brush. And... 
just try not to get my elbows in this. If you're painting along with me, you might want to consider rolling up your sleeves. So he's sort of a happy snowman. So I'm just going to do a little eye there, a little eye right here. And we'll just kind of, there we go. Even have it appear to sneak behind the nose. And we'll come back and we'll outline the nose and add some more. And now we need a smile. So let's do some not perfect black circles here. Yep. This is mouth made out of coal. And so these are not a consistent black. They're sort of, I'm just smushing the paint on. But I'm using a smaller brush simply because it allows me to keep those sort of smushed on circles smaller the way I like them or want them. All right, that's good. Slightly uneven. Oh no, it's an even number. Holly, don't freak out. Okay. So now we're starting to have a face. It's looking kind of cute. Now we need a neckerchief. And I was originally planning to do a red neckerchief, but all of a sudden, I want to do I want to do blue and turquoise. So, hopefully Miss Sandy won't freak out, but I'm going to do blue and turquoise. Let's see, what's the color we want? I have that guy. Uh, let me check. Here's one. What's that guy? Ooh, Laguna. Yes, of all colors, my most favorite turquoise. So this is Deco Art Americana Laguna. And we'll probably mix some other tones in too. We'll figure something out. So since I've got turquoise here, I'll bring this other guy out. Notice it's a little bit, ooh, there we go, darker than the other one. And I think the medium medium flat brush is gonna be my, my friend, not the biggest guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, the ferrule's loose, that's nice. Okay. So if I'm standing here, I'm gonna kinda just go right around his neck. Drag it across. I think we've already had a vote for polka dots, so we will polka dot his, ne his necktie. Maybe with blue or lighter turquoise, I'm not sure exactly. We just want to get that face part done. It's funny, you're watching this like, I could totally do that, and you know what? Yes, you could. And yes, you should. Everybody's pent up and got nowhere that are allowed to go for the next few weeks, you should paint a snowman. You should share this with all your friends. You all sit down and paint a snowman, right? Totally. All right, we got the neck part done. Now we gotta have a little tail on this sucker. Let's make this neck part stick out a little bit more like a knot. Okay, I got something to work with. Okay, we'll do this guy's coming down here. Boop, just right off the right off the board. Oh, this is like super goopy today. We'll do another one, tail that kind of comes down. Can make it go right behind our bird, so I have to be a little careful of Mr. Bird. Or Mr. Beakless Bird. There we go. Just kind of doing stripes. I think it was close enough to how I sketched it. I don't know. I drew right over all my pencil lines, so we're just kind of having fun right now. All right. So let some of that dry. Oh, actually, no, I need to add my other color to blend. So let's see. I will grab some of my deep teal which is yet darker. Although it's, in this light, it doesn't look that different from the other teal, but really it is. So shake her up. Yeah. I have this thing by the, 
I was gonna say a gallon, but actually it's only a half gallon. I don't have a full gallon of it. Okay. So while it's not significantly darker, there is there is a shift. So here's the lightest we used in the snow. Here's the neck. And then this is some of the shadowing and just extra interest we're gonna add. So just kind of grab some of it. I didn't even rinse my brush. I'm just gonna kind of drag those colors along the bottom. I could probably even go darker with that. Grab me some mermaid tail or peacock teal. In fact, that might be just the ticket. We'll see. So just kind of grabbing an, an outline on one side here. So oftentimes just using two colors one darker and one lighter can really go a long ways towards adding some dimension to an art piece. From it looking like, you know, a coloring book page to a, ooh, that's good, or ooh, you're talented, or maybe. But, you know, in my case, it's really not talent. It's mostly practice and learning technique, all of which we're learning right now, right? Okay. And I repeat this all the time, but I think I can never repeat it too many times. And it's that, you know, oftentimes we grow up and we hear, oh, so-and-so is talented, or I'm not talented, or I, you know, I just wasn't born with it. Well, guess what? Nobody was. Now, some of us maybe naturally have a different way of processing information and so we may look at stuff differently and it's easier to break art down but anybody can learn the skill and my goal is over time to teach you as well so here we have it there's just some variation in the colors of his necktie we will come in with dark outlines once it's dry and let's see here I'm just kind of looking at where we are for what's dry and so you notice I'm really kind of going back and forth and jumping from here to there and all over the place. And that's because I'm waiting for my paint to dry. And that's kind of typical when you're, when you're doing art um, is realizing that, you know, okay, you're in one spot, but your paint is wet. And if I do more with my wet paint, chances are I'm going to smudge it everywhere and create a mess. And it just, and so I just have to let it, let it dry. And I need to move on to the next piece. So I think I'm going to add some bright highlights to Mr. Snowman's hat since I'm here. So I'm going to go with the citron green. It's a really bright color here, so I'm just give it a good shake. And notice I'm working with two palettes here because I've got so much paint out. Come on, mixy, mixy, mixy that it would be really difficult to get all of it on a single palette. Okay, and so if you get one of these bottles and it comes with a plastic seal, as you'll notice a lot of mine have, this one still has the plastic seal, don't use your teeth. You can just twist on it as if you were trying to tighten the lid but have a somewhat loose grip and it'll twist that plastic right off. Be kind to your teeth, unless you want dentures, in which case, you know, you do you. Um, okay, yep, yeah, back to my small square brush. Again, that's a sort of a standard size brush that comes with art kits. And I'm just gonna kind of drag some around on the palette a little bit, get my brush thoroughly covered in it, but not gloppingly covered. And I'm gonna do a little bit of kind of a dry brushing technique, you know, with some paint, but not like huge amounts. Kind of right here at the, at the rim of his hat it up a little bit so I can get a better vantage for some of this. And again, if you mess up, if you can't fix it immediately, just be patient, let it dry, and you can come back and paint over it. Just don't try and fix something drastically while it's wet with more paint. It's not going to go well. Okay. And let's see, where's my mistletoe? I don't have any. I'm gonna put a little bit more mistletoe on my, and that's the medium green. So I have my, here's the dark evergreen, my medium, which is mistletoe. Could just as easily be festive green or holly green or any other number. I'm gonna blend a little bit here, because I think, yeah, there we go. 
I just kind of want some transitionary colors. There we are. We'll grab a little bit of that darker evergreen and blend here, there. So I'm using, I'm kind of working amongst my three, my three greens here to create a cleaner transition and a smooth, smooth look. Now I'm regretting having done the carrot nose already because I got to blend around it. Darn it. That's okay. We got this, right? Yes, yes we do. Just get a little muddy up there, so I'll come through one more time with a lighter, lighter green. Just kiss the edge of the carrot nose. There we go. Yeah. You got this girl. Come on. Okay. I'm going to blend here. I'll grab my blendy darker colors. So again, if you're like, oh, this is cool. I want to do this. Share it with your friends. Get a group of people together and just do it. Go to Lowe's. Get a get one of those six by six by 10 appearance boards, six inches by 10, oh, excuse me, six feet by, by 10 inches, which is technically nine inches by six feet. And then I cut mine down to five feet because I like it a little bit smaller. Oh, you can't hear, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I got what I got. All right, adding a little bit more of the lighter color here as a highlight. Nice mistletoe to blend. Again, those are just the names of the colors I'm using. Could be festive or bright green. And then my sort of citrusy whatever. And I'm allowing those brush strokes to show. Oof, it's getting hot. There's the water. All right, so now we have a pretty well, oh, there it is, blended colored hat. Fairly believable, right? Yeah. It's always fun when these things come together and you're like, wait, but I just watched you do that. That doesn't look hard. You know, it's not hard. You can totally do this. And the best part is when the recording is over, it will be lot, it will still be on Facebook so you can come back and watch it as many times as you need to. You can even hit pause and come back to it and do this snowman board with me. All right, I am attempting to fix a thing here on wet paint and it's not going well, so I just need to leave it for a minute. Okay, we good. Okay. Let's see. Next step. I think because I've got a couple of brush strokes Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do we want to do? Orange on the nose. That's what's that, that's what's good right here. Come in and add some blobs of orange. So because this paint is still a little bit wet in the tip of his nose, I am kind of dabbing the orange paint in. Still working with my small square or you know flat brush. I do like these flat brushes. They're just kind of like sort of favorites for me. They're very multi-purpose and useful. Okay. And now just to make the nose more believable, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that chocolate brown, bring it over here and mix my orange with it a bit. So let's add some shadow and just gonna kind of dab a little. I think I need more brown, less, less orange. A little brown at the bottom here. Just kind of around the edges there. I'm going to keep bringing that brown kind of right up the side. Bring in a few bits in. Make it carroty. Because you know when you get a long carrot, they're always a little bit wiggly waggly and they've always usually got a couple of what's the word I'm looking for I don't know I'm going to actually switch up to a smaller brush here get this brown going 
feel like I don't have the level of control that I'd like with a flat brush for this. So I'll just come in and kind of, yeah, now I'm just going with straight brown. Here we go. I don't want it to look too muddy, but a few just sort of stripes, curves, curves in here. Okay. And again, we will still come through and add the outline to this to make it even more distinct, but there's the nose. It's got the shading. Birds are looking pretty dry. So I'm gonna rinse the brown off this. Uh, no, we've got, it's, it's still wet there. So I'll work on the beak for this guy over here while I've got a little bit of paint that's still wet and orange. I'm just gonna do, you know, little triangles, right? Nothing major. Squawk, squawk. You notice we do, as we paint this, we try to think in, in terms of the layers and to always try to paint what's in the background first and then move our way forward. Cause you, except for here where I screwed up and painted the bird too fast because I was just so excited about them. Um, to always try and think about, again, you, you kind of want to be strategic about your painting and think about where, when you're going to put each piece in. If you paint the foreground first, then you spend a lot of time painting around that and driving yourself absolutely bananas. Aww. Looking at his arm, fairly dry. I think I'm gonna add some fun highlights and I will do that with gold. So I've got this DecoArt Americana, there you are, matte metallics. Just get the gold right out of the lid here. This stuff's pretty phenomenal. So I'm gonna just, oh, what happened here? <gasps> oh, gun from my thing. I'm just gonna add a little bit of gold to parts of that branch. It kind of adds a fun highlight. It'll be a little interest piece for anyone who comes up close and sees it. So it won't be super visible from far away, although there will be kind of some interest and difference, but up close, that's gonna be kind of cool. And here we go. Another gold, you know, it might catch a little bit of light and shimmer on camera, but it's always much cooler in real life. It's one of my most favorite paints. Oh my gosh. Always find like, I always need to spend either gold or glitter or gold or glitter and every once in a while both but for the most part most paintings kind of don't really ask for both uh, still quite wet here so i don't want to mess with his beak and maybe we'll add a little outline of his beak that way we know where it goes and then we'll tweak it later so i'm gonna kind of place my hand here and rest my arm on top. And I'm just gonna freehand, yeah, that's pretty mucky. Yeah, or maybe just a brown instead, that way it's not too bad. And I'll come over this, and we'll just do a little brown placeholder for that beak. And I'm using my left arm, a left hand, as a kickstand. He's a squawking bird. I like them both squawking birds. Okay. So that's a base coat, right? We're gonna come over it later with some orange. That's gonna drive me crazy. Man, I'm gonna fumble fingers today. I cannot hold on to my brushes. That's what happens when you get enough sleep. Does that make sense? Not really. You know what? I am going to break out my uh, hair dryer so that we can get this show on the road because there's all the cool details and I don't want to wait. Right, what does this plug into? Oh, okay. What does this plug into? Okay. Oh. 
All right, so lots of noise. I apologize. This is not the interesting part, but it is necessary. Ooh, let's try that again. Okay. I know, it's loud, huh? Okay, thank you for your patience mm -hmm. while I break out all my hair styling tools because I don't know how to style my hair, all my art supplies. Um, so one thing you can do which might be helpful is stick with either matte finish or glossy finish paints because it'll be much more obvious whether it's dry or not. However, oops, I have a little reminder popping up. It's gonna be driving me crazy. Um, I am kind of using a mix of both types and so it's a little bit more confusing because um, some of these are glossy. But um, it, with that drying definitely made the difference in here and the carrot is mostly, mostly dry as well. So let's go take a look at this and figure out where we want to put the arm. Because now is going to be the time. And I think I'm going to start with the small brush just to kind of sketch it in. So we'll have his other arm maybe come up. Hmm. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Where's, there we go. So I'm thinking kind of maybe a thing here. Well, his arm will mostly be off the page, but we'll just have a little bit that kind of shows. So we'll say it comes from right around his necktie, which you kind of can't see because it's off camera. I cannot get this whole thing on camera, I'm sorry. Put another stick kind of right up here near Mr. Bird. Maybe even put a stick right under him so Mr. Bird is actually sitting on a stick. There we go. Blech. Little hair in my face. Yeah, so the brown is sort of showing up, sort of not. So we will add a little bit of blue. Ooh. Oh yeah, I do have some black. So touch a black on the bottom to add some shadow. Although on this side, it almost doesn't need it when it's on the black already, but a little something here. I'm gonna blow it, just dry that sucker off and we'll grab some more of the gold. Oh, this time I'm gonna open the gold over my trash can because the last time it dropped all these crumbs, like gold crumbs right on my painting. Oh, those are not okay. All right, and a little bit of gold here. It's very gooey gold today. It's kind of love it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Here we go, adds a nice highlight. Doesn't have to be perfect or regular. Can you see that okay? Yeah, there we go. I still haven't figured out how to I'm working on this whole framing stuff on camera. I think we kind of got it. I just got to keep looking up, making sure you can see what I can see. There we go. I got the branch going, whoop, going on. That branch is a little bit funky. Maybe we'll add just one little offshoot here. Plop down some gold there. Just a tiny little. Little offshoot, something to keep it a little 
irregular. I don't know. Perfect. We want irregular. So now that we've got some better dryness, lid, okay. There we go. Wipe it off. We'll get some more orange. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Put your finger on the lid so that it doesn't accidentally. Because if it's going to happen to someone on camera, it's going to be me. You know it. Paint boogers, as so happens. Okay. A little bit of orange here. And we're going to do the beak on this bird right here. This is actually now solidly dry, so I can lean my arm right on it and get that beak going. I tell you, when I was planning this thing out and thinking about the colors, the necktie was going to be red, but for these cute little birds, I just feel like that would be overkill on the red, so we went with blue. Add a little bit more orange here and there to this carrot nose. I feel like I've gone a little overboard with the brown in a few spots, so we'll tune it up a little. Just a little bit here. Still, it's about where we want it to be. There we go. I'll touch up orange on his beak up here. But sometimes, you know, these things really do require a couple coats. No matter how good the paint is, sometimes it's really hard to get it in one swipe. And so you just gotta kind of apply some patience and keep coming back. And I think, oh yes, Holly, you wanted me to do polka dots on this guy. Let's do, oh, I have perfect, perfect, perfect blue. Oh, no, he's in a, I got him in a squeeze bottle. Let's do this guy. This blue makes me so happy. Technically, this blue is called turquoise, but it, to me, it looks like a cerulean or calypso or, well, not calypso, but it's, it's something bright and intense and supremely happy generating. So we're gonna go with that guy. And for polka dots, I'm gonna stick with the smaller guy for now, I think. Until I change my mind right in the middle of painting, which happens, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna draw a circle here. And I don't think these polka dots are gonna pop too, too much, but I think they'll still be kind of just a fun little change up for the guys. Necktie, neck scarf, whatever it is. Adding those polka dots. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Well, maybe you can. So you make sure you get some of them just coming right off the sides. Over here. Now, if you're really like, oh my gosh, I want to paint more snowmans with you, Wendy. Snowmen, not snowmans. That's not a word. Um, you can obviously rewatch this a million times, but if you'd like to be guided a little bit more step by step, I'm also going to be doing a big, a big snowman paint party for the Patty Elementary PTCO, or parent teacher. I don't remember what the C stands for, but you know uh, that thing. Um, and we're doing that on December 30th, and I believe the public are invited. So we'll be hosting a live Zoom call. Uh oh, that's not good. Anyways, a live Zoom call, but we'll also have the ability for you to just, you know, catch a catch a tutorial, which I've already filmed, and um, you can just follow along that tutorial, start and stop as much as you like, and it comes with a traceable design. And um, if you buy the art kit from the from the PTCO, it also comes with um, like a pre the pre traced. Canvas, all the paints, brushes, everything you need. And if not, we at least provide you with a supply list so you can get what you need to make the little happy snowman. 
And he's a little variation on this guy. The other one has little twinkle lights in his arms and he's got stars hanging from his arms. He's super, super cute. And he's, he's a little less Christmassy, a little bit more um, just kind of winter holiday celebration. So we're trying to keep it, you know, a little bit more neutral. Although maybe they didn't quite win with the twinkle lights. I don't know. But there's no green in that painting. All right, we have our goofy co polka dots. We're getting there. You see those? Sort of a funny color combo, but I'm, I'm enjoying it all the same. So we're just gonna go with it. Oh, I'm sitting here, I realize I forgot the gold on this part of his arm. We'll fix that after I finish the blues. And there was something about this blue that when it dries, it's just, ah, it's got this wonderful intensity to it and brightness and just kind of, I don't know, makes me happy. Mr. Frosty here. So I'm not worried too much about having super regular polka dots and super perfect. Just kind of keep it fun. Keep it whimsical. There we go. And you'll notice that some of them will be a little bigger, some of them a little smaller. I'm gonna make sure that some of them even just kind of go right off the edge of the, the scarf. So there you go, Holly, polka dot, per your request. And his arm over his head, per your suggestion. See y'all, I'll listen. You tell me what you want. Oh, uh, here we go. Y'all tell me what you want me to do and I will attempt to accommodate. Although I will say on this particular piece, I do have some bounds to stick within because it is a commission for someone. It's funny because I was like, I'm, I don't really feel like doing any port signs right now. Um, but after talking with her on the phone, I was like, oh, I absolutely need to do one for her. It's going to be so much fun. Okay. Yay. We have our blue. There's my water. I'll rinse it off. Just add that little bit of gold to his arm that I forgot earlier. Doop, doop. Now it's at least consistent, right? There we are. Okay, I'm gonna take a second red and I'm gonna add some highlights to our, our friends, the birds. Ugh, and that gold just leaves crumbs everywhere. Come on. Okay. process of dragging my arm through this. All right, so I'm swapping palettes again. So I'm trying to at least maintain kind of color themes. So oh, this particular one has the greens and the red and the orange on it. And this one has got my, so my turquoise blue, black and white. And no, not that there's necessarily rhyme or reason to it, um, but I was thinking, you know, at least kind of splitting half half and half. The green was gonna take up a lot of space because it was a huge portion and the black and white and turquoise was gonna take up a lot of space for the snow parts. Um, and so having those on separate plates just in ensures that I'm not smudging you know, green through my white or vice versa. So I grabbed this time a red called True Red, which in comparison to the Cherry Red is really it doesn't look so different on camera, but to the naked eye, it is pretty different. You can see that this guy is a lot brighter. And so I'm going to take some of him and I'm just going to add some. Oh, that's not really doing anything. Okay, we'll just brighten up the whole bird with it then. We'll make him really bright. Okay, I'll use whites. I'll use lighter highlights on him later. Let's see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're good. Just make them red. Okay. 
I guess our bird's going to need a hairdryer job pretty soon. Get his feathers all ruffled. There, that's better. I wanted a braided red. I'm happy now. Ah, but you know what we can do while his paint is wet is we can add some shadows on the underside. And I hope you can't see it. I'll shift the camera or shift the guy. Get this guy a little redder too. Make a little bit more fire engine -y. Yeah, that's better. The red was a little bit too meh for me. So we'll get some highlights on them and some shadows and make this guy look just a little bit more birdie. Birdie like and round and fat and cute and all that good stuff. Okay, grabbing a small amount of black, just kind of dipping the tips in here, maybe offload a little bit. I'm gonna come under and just, oh yeah, that's pretty intense, isn't it? But that's okay. I'm gonna kind of just come on the underneath side, underneath side, and blend up. There we are. Do a little extra right here under his chin. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. I didn't think I was that hungry. So if I flip that up so you can kind of see what happened there. Oop, wait, there we go. I added the darkness just and blended it right in along the bottom here. And now he's looking way more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Round and fat and cute. Okay, now we'll switch over to this guy. And again, always feels like a bit of a risk when I grab some of that black, but just dip the tips in and then offload some of it on your palette. Because you can always add more black, but boy, if you start with too much, sometimes you got a lot of backpedaling and fixing to do. So I'm starting from his neck and just doing his torso or his body first to kind of build up my sense of comfort with how much black I've got on that brush. Going and grabbing some of the stuff that I just offloaded and I'll go under his chin so I'm doing this dark portion really on the underneath because that's where the shadows are. That's where the light has a little more trouble getting to. And coming up the tail. There we go, a little bit more. Yeah, that works. A little bit more right here. Oink. Right next to his beak. And now you know what these guys need is they need little eyes. So let's see, which has the best tail? Ooh. Mm, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna grab a brush that has a pretty sizable tail or butt end, whatever you wanna call it. I'm just trying not to, I'm trying to stay family and child friendly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick, dip the tail of that guy in. Can you see that? A little black on the end of my brush. I'll just dot it right where I think his eye is gonna be, kind of right there. Should leave a nice black. Well, sort of, sort of not. Ah, come on. Fine. Do you want to play like that? I will play. All right, well, maybe I have too much paint on it. I think if the paint was dry, it would be okay. So I'm gonna have to freehand that guy. Oh yeah, I have way too much paint there. So just a good size black dot. We will add some highlights to his eyeball later again to make it a little more realistic. I'll bet you this one will dot properly. Let's see if I can at least demonstrate that pro okay once. Oop, not on camera yet. Okay, here we go. And dot. Yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm underwhelmed and unimpressed. I'm going to freehand him in. There we go. Nice round black eyeball. Again, that needs to dry. And then once it's dry, um, we'll add a little, little bit of a white highlight to it to give it some more realism. It'll look like a birdie eye. Oh, 
done some here with the black. Um, I want to add some more black to my palette just to be sure. Swapping them out. Bloop. All right, I think two bloops is good. I'm going to start doing some outlining. So let's see. If I am right-handed, which way do I want to go? This way, I think. Okay. So you notice sometimes I try and talk my way through what am I doing, what am I thinking. Um, and the idea is that if I'm doing black this way, I will constantly be dragging my arm over it. So I'm going to try and start from the left and work my way right so that I minimize the risk. All right, so I got a little sloppy over here. Maybe that's not, you can't even see that. There you go. Okay. Got a little bit sloppy in this section, so I'm just gonna kind of re-add some definition. And I think we do, yeah, let's do it. We kind of want to just add a fine line for the base of the snow, just a little something. So I'm working with my small round brush. It's not a super sharp tip one, but it's good enough. And any time that I want it to get, become a little smaller and sharper, I will take that brush and just kind of twist it right on in the paint to help bring the, the bristles together again. So we'll continue that line there. And then I'm going to just darken that little tiny corner so that we have some roundness to the edges of our snowman. Because I got a little sloppy with my brush and I was whoosh, right outside the lines. Luckily, we can fix it. All right. So now in the mid body, I've also got a couple other areas where, um, yeah, I got a little sloppy. It's cool. It's cool, right? And so again, I think I mentioned earlier, I've got some shiny paint and some matte finish paint. I'm not super concerned because I do have a top coat that I finish all of this with, which will even all that out. Now for him, I'm going to make, ooh, let's see, how do we do this here? Gonna create some very fine lines. I'll trace along the bottom of this particular snowball. And I'm letting the line break and be a little bit sketchy. Can you, where are we? Yeah, you can see that. It's, it's, it's fairly subtle, but I've got just a little bit of darkness on it. But I, again, I did let it break, so I'm not worried about a perfect perfectly shaped black line that's all the even thickness but just enough to kind of create that yep there's a there's a there's a differentiation so we'll add some outline here and we will add some outline to the fur oh geez louise okay here's the, okay, I want to do the stick first so I'm going to do some black lines along the bottom of the stick and kind of a little black on the tips. And again, it can be a little broken. This will just sort of smooth up some of those edges, add some shadow at the bottom, make it look a little crisp. Okay, a little shadow in the corner there. This may be hard to see, I apologize. Now we'll come around and we'll do an outline on Mr. Bird here. Oh, he needs some legs, doesn't he? All right, we'll put some. Okay, let's do the legs now since I'm here and thinking about it. Same brush, with a long bristle. I'm literally just going to lay the brush one, two, three, then maybe another one, one, two, three. They almost just kind of look like little, little bird toes and then some lines that meet his body. And that's it. He now looks like he's gripping the branch. Woohoo! That was easy, wasn't it? Outline the top of Mr. Bird. Give him that finished look. And I'll also have to come in and give him some, some white highlights. 
I've got to let some of this black dry. So we'll add a little wing shape here while we're at it. There we go. Let's see, can I do his beak? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. How you guys doing? This is a longer tutorial, isn't it? All right, we are mostly dry, so I don't think I run too much of a risk resting my arm. I just have to not drag it. I have to lift. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Again, there's outlines, and since the tie is up here, I'm gonna. Continue the outline all the way up the neck to a little knot right here. Gonna clean up those edges of the knot like so. Boop. And then, oh, here comes the fun part again. Keep going. That's a little nerve wracking. I'm just going to say it out loud. That's a little nerve wracking. I feel like I'm going to mess it up any minute. Okay. Whew. We got it. We got it. Okay. Keep going. Oh, see. All right. Baby wipe time. Oh, you can't see, but. I got blue smush on his face, darn it. Okay, we're good. Magic baby wipes to the rescue. Whew. Glad I caught that when I did. So, all my aspiring painter friends, go get baby wipes. I got these at Lidl for not too much. They're fantastic. They don't have a scent. I don't like anything scented, so what do you know? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna keep. So I have to be more careful with my with my thing here. Because my blue is clearly not as dry as I thought it was. Just outlining it and then drawing a little here. So as a reminder, if you're like, oh my gosh, this is fun, share it with your friends. Get everybody to join you. Do a snowman tutorial. Okay. Now it's time for me to get up and move around a little here. We'll do his hat. So right around the base of his head. A little bit here. Kind of Moving along Mr. Snowman's face to create a better definition. Come right up to the edge of the carrot, to both sides. So I usually advocate moving the canvas around, but this is a big, long piece and not really conducive to moving around, so I get to move me around instead. Now I'm going to come down and do the carrot. So I'll move this one here, right over it, just dragging as much as possible. I'm really aiming to get kind of a, a pulling motion of that brush, just pulling. Coming around here, kind of getting just the curve at the base. Whoop. Okay, now we're queued up for success. I can literally just pull. I'm trying to keep it as continuous a motion as possible until it feels like my brush stroke is going to break a bit. Okay. Woo! Got it. Maybe a couple of lines to accentuate that carrot. Lumpy bumpiness. Boom, 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 boom. He's cute. He's cute. Now I don't want to give it away. I want to keep it, but I don't get to. I just have to paint another one, huh? 
I do have another board downstairs. A little shorter. Oh, shit, a lot shorter. It's like three feet and like fatter. That could be super fun. Maybe. We'll have to do that. Okay. I'm going to kind of drag a clean line of black along the rim of the hat. Yep. Adding more paint to the brush. Continue to just drag that line. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That makes Mr. Frosty here pop quite a bit. I'm cleaning the edges of the hat with the black, even though I'm painting black on black. And I was a little sloppy with my brushwork. And so this just allows me to clean and tidy those edges, make them smooth. You can see that. Yeah, you can. So look at that. His head is really popping now. I'll get along the edge of his hat here. Cleaning that up a bit. Yep. Mr. Bird here, except for his eyeballs, looking pretty dry. That's good. Still trying to keep from dragging my arm over it. You know. Get the hat. All right, now let's go ahead and get some of the lines on the... Yeah, okay, we're good. Branch of his arm. Little tip there, tip there. Oh, we need, we need birdie legs or birdie feet, so one, two... Three, one, two, three. Again, nothing special. It's it's good enough. You're not looking for superbly accurate and highly rendered, but we want believable. Okay, this guy doesn't need as much of an outline, but we'll still add a little. A little curve under his chin. We'll be on, on his backside here to smooth him up. And maybe a little something there to smooth them up. Okay. Well, his beak is wonky, isn't it? Oh, can you see that? Yeah, his beak is a little wonky. It's okay. Let's see, what do we got? Let's de wonkify. Boop, -de doop. There we go. Okay, I feel like we're kind of. Coming in for a landing, as I like to say, when it feels like we're sort of starting to finish up. I know I'm forgetting something. I will at some point probably get the word welcome up at the top. Um, I also am hoping to add some snowflakes. So maybe we need to run the blow dryer again to get the stuff a little dry enough so that I can actually apply the stencils. And I actually tape the stencils to the top so I wouldn't misplace them because I'm the queen of misplacing. So if you have stencils, awesome. I just have a bunch of snowflakes. So we'll add a few of those for fun. We'll keep them kind of taped here so I don't lose them. Go ahead and rinse the brushes. And I'm thinking if I'm doing all this white, I will need yet another palette. But hey, big piece of art, lots of palettes. And I can, ooh, this will be perfect. It's actually stencil paper from my Cricut vinyl, or vinyl backer. Okay, so blow dryer first, get all these wet parts done. That way I'm not dragging the wrong stuff around. Oh yeah, and the other thing I needed to do, which I keep forgetting, is add some of the highlights. So, 
shake our paint. Y'all saw me screw that up the first time. We don't need to screw it up again. Okay. Oop. There we go. So back to my, my round brush. He's getting a little, a little funky by now. And again, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to shift the whole project this way so that I'm not dragging myself through. And so we'll add a little highlight kind of right along the top of his beak, a little something on the top of his head, a little here, a little something on his wing, maybe a tail feather or two, maybe a little line somewhere on our sticks. Oh, you know what he needs? He needs highlights on his toes. Yeah, all highlights on his toes. It's like I'm painting his nails, but not. There we go. And a little highlights on the on the branch as well. Okay, and then for this guy, okay, we'll add some highlights to the branch here since it's on my mind. A little something on the top of the but of the knot here. Some here. I'm just adding little highlights. Kind of wherever that seems to make sense. Just kind of adds a little more interest, keeps it from seeming too flat. Isn't that fun? It just kind of makes those aspects pop a little bit. So of course he's gonna need some highlights on his nose, maybe a couple of little divots in to kind of show the curves of the carrot. I don't know. Oh, let's round that brush extra. There we go. So now his nose is more highlighted. Makes more sense. It looks real round. Maybe a little shine here and there on the coal in his mouth. Boop. There we go. Fun. Now we need some highlights on the brim of his hat. So little bits here and there. Little white spots. See that? Look at that, that really pops in. That gets us to where we want to be. There's something here along the top. Maybe a couple of shine lines smack in the middle. The highlighted zone. Because you know in the old days top hats were made of horse hair, so you would almost be seeing some of those lines kind of oh where are we at? There we are. Maybe a little, little highlight along the top, catching the, the light, even though I've got shadows there. A little something along the side. Okay. Yep. Some here. So I'm, I have to admit, I'm kind of using my intuition and feeling like, okay, I want some highlights here. I want some highlights there. And I'm just throwing them on. So hopefully as you see this, you're like, oh, hey, that's cool. But these highlight pieces are often kind of that, that sort of finishing piece that makes a thing go, yeah. Well, something here on his feet, we're painting his toenails, so to speak. And little lights on the branches. Again, that brown is kind of not showing the way we wanted it to on the black. A little redemption on his beak there, I don't know. Oh yeah, something down here too. Boop, boop. Um, Oh, yeah, I didn't do his, his wing. Eh, okay, I'll come back in and add it a little later. It's fine. No biggie. There's something on the top of his head, on his back, up his tail. Boop. All right. My vantage point is all bad for that guy. Can you see this? Oh, I'm silly. Totally, here we go. Blink. Get him there, it's looking cute. And he's a little, little highlight on his eye. So since his eye is round, I'm gonna have just kind of a little something there. You see that? It's just a teeny tiny little curve that follows the dot of his eye. And we'll do that on the other one as well. Okie dokie. Okay, now it is time for snowflakes. It is time for snowflakes. 
I cannot wait another minute. I want snowflakes now. But I think I will just try and dry some of the little white bits so I'm not smearing them. Okay, wait a minute. on towards functional here okay let's see where did I put them oh right I taped them to it so I wouldn't lose them oh. maybe packing tape wasn't the best idea that's okay all right we got this Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where's the other guy? Okay. Yep. All right, so I am grabbing my stencil brushes. You see what's different about these guys? They're round and flat. Stencil brushes. Now, there's a lot of different ways of applying stencils. Um, you can use makeup makeup sponges with like the little wedges that are all foamy and just you can use foam daubers. I'm super heavy handed and I tend to just make a massive mess with pretty much anything that's not a stencil brush. So my method is stencil brush. It works best for me. My sister-in-law, Lisa, is super meticulous and she does great with the daubers. I don't. So very much what I'm about to show off is preference. Excuse me while I move one or two things around. Okay. Shifting my angle a little bit so this thing doesn't fall all over the place. So I want a big snowflake right here. Not on center, but off center. Oh, you still can only kind of see it. The monitor stand is in the way. All right. Okay. All right, now we're on camera enough. I'm going to tilt the camera instead. Hey, look at that. Somebody fought our way through this. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to use this guy. So you're wondering why am I doing this? I'm trying to gauge this one guy's brand new and he has sparkles in the handle and I kind of love it, but I'm not sure I want to break him in on camera because if he pisses me off, you know, I can't be held accountable for my words. Right. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to go with a softer guy. And I like just slightly softer because I feel like it allows me to manipulate it a little better. So on this, well, piece of slippery paper, I have pulled out the, the paint and I'm just kind of smearing it around and spreading it out. You probably can't see it because it's white on white. Oh, there we go, kind of. But what I'm trying to do is offload some of the paint so that I have kind of a minimal, minimal amount of paint on the brush. So I've placed this guy down and now I'm going to go over and do these sort of circular brush strokes. And for me, I mean, yes, I'm going to get some paint squidging underneath this, this guy, but it's going to be a whole lot less for me with the round circular motions than it is with a foam dauber brush. Some of y'all will probably be like really good at the foam instead of the brush brush. So you're gonna have to experiment a little bit with your um, with your styles or with the methods and see which one works best for you. You 
can also pounce a little bit, but that just starts to drive me batty. And so I'm not, I, I'm okay with, with, with the paint kind of squishing under. What the heck? Somebody dropped something. On my neighbors, I'm in townhouses, so things get noisy around here. So just a smidge more white in a few spots so it's not like overly gray. satisfying kind of not all right and rip it up and whoo there it is yay we have the first of several snowflakes so i think that might be the only time i use the big guy he's so big and kind of dominates so i also used up most of my sploosh of paint so we'll add some more now i've got a sheet so we'll go ahead and just add some of these I think I'll just place this like, well, I painted on this side last time, so we'll do it again. So, do the same thing with a brush. Okay. Yep, you can see what I'm doing, good. Just hold it down and swirl my paint on. I'm gonna try and avoid painting over that guy there. Snowflakes here. A couple will come down. Maybe even go over our birdie a little bit. Near our birdie. Mm, yeah, let's see. Oh, that's fun. So some of those are going to be darker than others. That's, that's fun. Okay. So we'll add maybe a big one on Mr. Frosty, on his hat. Maybe another one over here, a little guy. Here, whoopsie, I went over the edge. Wow, baby wipe a smidge. Okay, peel it up. That's cute. I don't like how that guy happened over there, so we'll just wipe him off. Wipe that guy off, wipe that guy off. Now you know why I kind of, oh, I smeared him, darn it. It's fine, we're good. too much on the back side. Sometimes just give it a little wipe with a baby wipe. Pick up some of the extra. I'll put a snowflake here. I want one right there. It's a fairly imprecise art, but it's kind of fun. Kind of satisfying. Hey, Sarah. Thank you. I know you've already got a cool snowman on your porch. And I'm going to put a couple on Mr. Frosty here. I'll try not to smudge it this time. And also, you know, we, we did we did the snow slightly gray, so the white snowflakes show. I love that part. Now you really see why I did that. I forgot. I knew I had a reason, but I couldn't remember what it was. Okay, I'm off camera, aren't I? I'm sorry. I am off camera. Shoot. Oh, let's tilt it back. No, not so much. Okay, not too much smudging. That's good. And there's a cool snowflake. I want that one. Now, this would probably be significantly simpler and better if I had just, say, one snowman or one snowflake on my template instead of many, but what happened there? But I don't, so we're just going with it. And I think Miss Sandy is going to be super excited to get this. So it's all good. Granted, I'm a little mess here, so I'm going to wipe. Hooray for dry paint. Yep. Okay. Keep going. Put something here. Now you also see why I have the blue background. It looks so good. And the snowflake shows up really well. And now she has a beautiful winter scene. A 
Again, I'm off camera, I'm sorry. Oh, bye. Okay, come back. So now, we got all the way down here. Just added a couple more little snowflakes just to kind of mix them in for fun. step out for perspective and I kind of smushed over the edges on a, in a few spots so I will probably come in and tidy it up a little but I'm just kind of looking trying to get a sense I love the look of these smaller snowflakes so I'm going to take my smaller template here um, and add a few more yeah we'll try this guy out hopefully I don't he doesn't piss me off too bad I just want a couple another on his hat here. Sparkle handle. Stencil brush. I got it at Michael's. Oh, 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 yes. Yes, that looks good. Hi, get a little excited some? Uh-huh, I know, I know. I can't help myself. Something on his hat. Yep, 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 yep. Boink, uh-huh. Maybe a little something on his neckerchief. Yep. So he just kind of looks like he's hanging out in the snow and the snow is happening. So I'm attempting to kind of go over some of the boundary lines of things that I've painted so that it really looks like the snow is Ta -da. He needs a something nice on his belly. What's a good one for his belly? That one right there. So I'll have to let this guy dry for, you know, 12 to 24 hours, just the regular paint before I seal it. But I do try to weather seal these things with outdoor spar urethane. Um, which helps it stay kind of weatherproof. And so if you've ever been to my house or done a porch pickup for any any kids, you've probably seen one of my signs out. Um, mine always get covered in spider poop, so I'm really adamant about sealing them so that I can sponge the spider poop off. Darn spiders. Okay. I'm going to call it good. I will come back in later and write the word welcome, but I really need to let this guy dry. And you guys have been watching for quite a while. I thank you for your patience and for sticking with me. And again, if you're like, oh my gosh, that was fun. I want to do it. I want my friends to do it with me. Share the video, share the video, share the video. Like do it, go to Lowe's, get your appearance board, get your, um, again, I primed it with just a plain old black uh, paint. Um, black house paint exterior. And the reason I use the exterior is so that it can kind of flex uh, with the weather as it gets hot and cold. Um, and it would help seal the board and just kind of do the things it needs to do to keep it safe and last long. Um, and then I seal it eventually with some spar urethane. Um, which, and I usually try and go for the satin finish. Um, Rust-Oleum I think has a really good one. I forget the other one. Some people use polycrylic, although that's designed for interior, so I don't I don't usually use the polycrylic. But there you have it. Oh, you can also get the spray paint, the clear. The clear stuff. This one here is the matte enamel, and this one is the clear glaze. This one might be like super glossy, so I wouldn't recommend it, but this one would probably be awesome. So there you go. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you again. Bye.